Well, it is really an honor for me to be able to share from my heart with you, our congregation. And you heard Leandria and I in our hearts and just the overwhelming gratitude we have felt inside of us from you, our congregation. The love and the support has what has been shown to us. It's been so overwhelming. And so over the next two weeks, I want to share my heart, my prayer for you, our church, a message that I believe is from God for us. You see, these sermons were birthed from this verse that God so clearly spoke to me on the morning of my final interview with the national leadership team. And it was on that morning, like I do every morning, I spend time with God, but God clearly gave me a word and spoke to me personally, but also a promise for our church, which I believe is my calling verse into this new role, but also a verse that God has given for us as a church. Joshua 1 verse 1 to 9 says, In the same way that I was with Moses, I will be with you. I won't give up on you. I won't leave you. Strength, courage, you are going to lead this people to inherit the land that I promised to give to their ancestors. Give it everything you have, heart and soul. Make sure you carry out the revelation that Moses commanded you. Every bit of it. Don't get off track either left or right, so as to make sure you get to where you are going. And don't for a minute let this book of Revelation be out of mind. Ponder, meditate on it day and night, making sure you practice everything written in it. Then you'll get where you're going. Then you'll succeed. Haven't I commanded you Strength, courage, don't be timid, don't get discouraged. God, your God is with you every step you take. And so today I want to share from Joshua what I believe is God's word for us as Edge Church. Because it's just so amazing how you see what is happening in the nation of Israel and what is going on and how I see that with us here at Edge Church. I see us in those very verses. Because we have stepped into something new. We have crossed over the River Jordan. I can see God working here. God is revealing to me where we are as a church and what He is calling from us to do in this new era. Remember Isaiah 43, 19 spoken over this house? For I am about to begin something new. And it is so God that the very verse that he gave me for my transition personally from Joshua 1 is so significant to where we are as a church. You see the setting of this passage, and I'm going to teach from this, is that if this is after God gave the word to Joshua, the verse that I just read in chapter 1. You see, the nation of Israel, they poised at the, the bank of the Jordan River to cross over to the promised land. And they're standing there, poised, ready to do the crossover. And I want to pick it up from in chapter 3. They're crossing over. You see, where in chapter 3 is the account of how Israel crosses over into the promised land. And you see, the only way that the Israelites could get to the promised land was for them to cross over the Jordan River. This is key. This is something important that we need to acknowledge here. Because you will never enter into something new unless you cross over, till you move, till you leave the old behind. That is what crossing over is all about. It's leaving the old, it's leaving this place, and it's moving into the new. And we do this throughout our lives. We go from primary school to high school, well, hopefully we all do that. Um, you go from a student life to a working career. Some of us go from singleness to married life, and all those singles are proclaiming a blessing. Um, sometimes it goes from just the two of you, your husband and wife, and you go to having a child. We move, we cross over. It's leaving the old to embrace the new. 
And as we hold on to the promise, the legacy of this church, what God has given us, we hold on to that, but we enter into the new that God is calling of us. And so now the Israelites, they move, they cross over. But I want you to notice what happens here. What is so important here for this crossover and what happens? You see, the first thing that happens before they cross Look at what Joshua says, what he says, and he speaks in, in verse 3. And from verse 3, it talks, so he says, Send first the Ark of the Covenant in the crossing. Send first the Ark. Do you know why God instructed Joshua to do this? Why the Ark of the Covenant was to go first? It was because God was telling his people that he, the Lord, their God, was the one leading them, that they had never traveled this way before. But he knew the way and he was going to lead them. You see, the Ark of the Covenant was God's presence with them. God's presence was leading them through this crossover. It's just like when they left Egypt in Exodus. Under Moses' leadership, it says this in, in Exodus 13, 21, it says, The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud and provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night, and the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire from its place, and it was in front of the people. Church, I want you to notice God was always in front of the people. He was guiding him. His presence was always with him. And Joshua followed that same principle of obedience here. And so when God began to speak to us as a leadership team about the journey of our transition as a church, our very own crossing that we felt that God was calling us to, we didn't know what 2020 had in store for us. I had a word from God that it was a move. By faith, we were called to move, but we had no idea that COVID-19 would come our way and all that came with that. But you know, just like the Israelites, with the Ark of the Covenant that went before them, we had the presence of God that was leading us. We felt it even though we had never been on a journey like this before. We never knew and we didn't know what God is calling to us, but he said, will you cross over? Will you move? And Edge Church, we have crossed over. The past two weeks have been our very crossing over. This is a big thing. You see, two weeks ago, we celebrated the legacy, the rich inheritance that, that has been left to us as a church under the leadership of Peter and Bobby. And just like the Israelites in chapter 4 of Joshua, who now they've crossed over the Jordan on dry ground, and God instructed them to build a historic marker, a monument, a memorial of 12 stones to remember what God has done so they could go back back and tell of this story. We did this. Two weeks ago, we built a memorial of stones remembering what God has done over the many, many years in each church. How he has led us and how he has been so faithful to us as a church. And last week, when I was inducted, that was our crossing, entering into the new era like Israel. And you know that crossing the Jordan River for Joshua, what that meant? It meant entering into the promised land and taking up the mantle of leadership from Moses. Last week was me taking on that mantle of leadership for each church. And I see the likeness of the people of Israel and Joshua with us as a church. We have crossed over. Do you see it? Can you see it? We're not standing at the water's edge with our toes in the water or standing in the middle of the river. We've actually crossed over to the other side. We have taken the bold steps of faith and obedience, just like Abraham in Hebrews 11 verse 8, our anchor verse for the year. By faith, he obeyed. He heard, he stepped out of faith, and he obeyed. This is significant. It is a defining moment 
for us as a church. To think that during this year, what 2020 has held for us, that God has led us to this place, to this crossing, it can only be because of God's faithfulness and our obedience. Because I know for some of you, you might be thinking, are we a little mad? We're doing this kind of crossover. This kind of transition in during this season, have we lost it? During this time, couldn't we have waited till we were all back when everything was back to normal? It's kind of funny when you read in chapter 3 of Joshua, when the Israelites had to cross over the Jordan River in verse 15, take note of the timing of the crossing. When it happened and you read it, it says, now the Jordan is at flood stage all during the harvest. Those words, flood stage, those are not the words you want to hear or read when you must cross a river and cross it without any boat or any kind of floating device. Those are not the words you want to read. And we know that it was flooded, that the river was flooded because of the seasonal timing. That word harvest tells us that in fact it was actually springtime. And the snow from the mountains were melting and it was flowing into the river and the banks were bursting. It may not have seemed like it was good timing for the Israelites to be crossing over. It may not even seem like it's a good time for us to be crossing over. Our church hasn't been, we've been without a building for nearly six months. We haven't gathered in a building. But yet God led the Israelites and us to cross over right now. But do you see, when God asked the Israelites to cross over, the timing, it wasn't on their agenda. Joshua wasn't like, okay, everything is great, perfect timing, this is the right season, the right timing. It was not at all on their timing. It was all on God's timing. Galatians 4 verse 4 says, but in the fullness In the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son. Take note, that word timing. It is God's timing, his hand. You see, we see how even Jesus' life, he lived under the timing of his father. When his disciples asked him and they said to him, well, Jesus, when are you going to establish your kingdom. Listen to what it says in Acts verse 1. Every time they gather together, they ask Jesus, Lord, is it the time now for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? And he answered, the Father is the one who sets the fixed dates and the times of of their fulfillment. You see, God wanted to show Israel and he wants to show us that it's his power, his timing, that he is working for us. And that is how God works. He wanted them to obey and follow his leading. And we see it throughout scripture, all over the place, that God will often lead and direct and call you to take the next steps, to cross over when you might be thinking, no, this is not the right time, not now. I don't have my life in order. I'm too afraid. I'm uncertain. I don't know what the future's going to look like. And you have this question and God says, will you lift your head? Trust me. Trust my timing. This is what I want to do. Take those steps of faith and, of faith and cross over. Lift your head. And this is key. Lift your head and see God has begun a new thing. And what is God calling us to hold on to? Asking us to lift our heads and see what is it that he's asking of us? There are four things, four things that God promises us and he instructs us to hold on to. It is the four things that he gave Joshua, the four things that I am personally holding on to as we cross over, the four things that I'm asking you to hold on as we have crossed over. Go back to Joshua 1. It says, haven't I commanded you strength, courage, don't be timid, don't get discouraged. God, your God is with you 
every step you take. And number one, the first thing that we hold on to is strength. Zechariah 4 verse 6 says, Then he said to me, This is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force, nor by, take note, by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's army. Church, it is not about our talents. Hear me. It is not going to be about our talents or our skills or our abilities that we'll be able to occupy the new thing. It is by God's power. Psalm 127 says, it is God's grace. If God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. You see, our dependency must be on God's strength to build our house, to occupy the new era that he has called us into. Strength from God. Secondly, We need courage to cross over. And I'm the first one to put my hand up and say, I need lots of courage. You see, when Peter and the disciples, they see Jesus walking on the water in Matthew 14, and they say, it's a ghost. They cried out in fear, but Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, well, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, when he looked around, he was afraid. And he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and he caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why do you doubt? You see, church, courage keeps our eyes on Jesus, not on our circumstances around us. Because courage is not the absence of fear, but instead it's believing that God is with me even if I'm walking on the waters, even if I'm in a storm. Courage is saying, Lord, use me. I am weak, but you are strong. That is the courage that we're talking about here. Which leads to the third one which is don't be timid. You know that a synonym for timidity is self-doubt. And you know what self-doubt does? It keeps us locked up in a prison where we're unable to develop to our full potential because it's actually a fear of failure. And God is calling us, he's calling his people, he's calling us as a church, he says, Enter into this new era. Do not be timid. Don't have self-doubt because 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For he has given us a spirit, not a spirit of fear and timidity, but instead power, love, and discipline. A spirit of power, love, and discipline so that we could take bold steps of faith faith, trusting God for the greater things, the impossible things, things we have not seen yet. Look up, church, lift your head. Ephesians 3 verse 20 says this, never doubt God's almighty power to work in you and accomplish all he has. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and even your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. We need that, that energizing, which leads me to the last point. Don't get discouraged. Church, hear my heart. I want to encourage you, as we move into the new thing that God is doing, and he is doing a new thing. Don't let the enemy sow doubt or fear or confusion in your life. And can I tell you, that is exactly what he wants to do. Why? Because he is the king of lies, the father of lies, we read. And as you and I step into the new thing of what God is calling us, for us as a church, the enemy doesn't want that. And so whose voices are you listening to? You know those voices that come? 
Because people might be saying things that, oh, you can't do that, it's impossible, that won't happen, your dream won't come to pass, that will never, your life can't be used. Those are lies of the enemy. Listen to the voice of God and what God says. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says this, Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Look there. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. You know that the very same words that God gave to Moses when he led the people out of captivity in Egypt is the very same words he gave to Joshua to occupy the new land. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, and I hold this verse dear to my heart. It says, do not be afraid, and see that word again, discouraged. For the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail nor abandon you. And this is where I want to end. You see, the last part of that promise, the last few words of that verse that we hold on to, the promise. It doesn't need any more explanation or fancy words or try to be unpacked because the power in these words, the power of God's word is enough. God, your God, is with you every step you take. Edge Church, your God is with you every step you take. I want to encourage you, personalize that sentence. That's what I've been doing. I've been putting my name in front of it and I read it again. I go, Daniel, God, your God is with you every step that you take. Church, God is with us. And he's not only with us when we get to the promised land, when we've arrived and we're thriving and we're all together in the same space. No, every step we take, God is with you right now where you find yourself today. Whether it's on the highs of the mountains or on the very lows of the valley. He, what does he promise? He says, I'm with you every step. This is what I'm holding on to as we have crossed over into this new era. And I want to encourage you, church, to hold on to these four promises. I believe it is a word from God for our church as we have crossed over. Strength, courage, do not be timid, don't get discouraged because God, your God is with you every step you take. Each church, will you lift your head and see what God is doing? And as I spoke about this and I said those words, and I, maybe you feel that God is not with you because you don't know God. You've never had that personal relationship with him. Today, I'm extending an invitation to you for you to come and know this personal, intimate God who wants to have a relationship with you, who's calling you to come to him today, that he's saying, I don't care about your past. I don't care about your mistakes, what you have done, your regrets, that you're not good enough to know him. Today, he calls you to follow him. And maybe, there's this feelings of emptiness and loneliness and fear. Hear the truth of God, that He wants to walk with you every step of your life. Today is an invitation which is in front of you. Will you accept it? All you need to do is say yes and give your life to Jesus. And if that's you right now, I want to pray for you. And I want you to say this prayer where you find yourself right now. Today, I give my life to you. I give everything. I ask that you forgive me of my past, the wrongdoings, the things that I've done, the mistakes that I've carried. Today, I turn away from my old self and I come and I follow you. Jesus, today I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We are celebrating with you and we want to be able to walk this journey with you. So please make contact with our pastoral team so we can connect with you.
But church, I'm excited for what God is doing, really. I am so excited for what He's doing. And I'm going to continue sharing next week and start to unpack the rest of the promise that God has laid on my heart. So I want to encourage you to don't, don't miss what God is doing. Don't miss what He's saying. Stay with us. But I want to pray a prayer of blessing over you as you go into your week. A prayer of blessing that I prayed over us last week. And I want to pray this and I ask that you receive it in the name of Jesus. Jude 1 verse 24 says, Now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from falling away and bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power and authority all before all time and in the presence and beyond all time. Amen. God bless you, church. We'll see you next week.